It has been a while since I dedicated time to playing any Metroidvania games. <coughs> well, <coughs> so you, you did drop in for tea after all. <laughs> oh, you, you are a bit late, you know. As medical school tends to drain my desire to explore new things. However, one game caught my eyes on the Steam homepage when I was trying to launch CS2. Upon taking a closer look, I decided, why not? Let's give this game a shot. After all, my girlfriend is currently in the process of completing Hollow Knight and watching her struggle night after night subconsciously influenced my decision to purchase this game. He's back. Oh. It has rekindled my thirst for platformers. A thirst that had faded while waiting for Silk Song, Crow's Warn, and Fallen Tear The Ascension. And of course, being preoccupied with medical school. <laughs> The game I'm referring to is Momodora Moonlit Farewell. So today I will briefly discuss the aspects I did not like about the game, the things that I enjoyed, and ultimately provide my verdict on whether this game is worth its $16.99 price tag. Before delving into it, I want to emphasize that this is my personal opinion and Momodora has its own set of pros and cons that may be viewed differently by players who have experience with older Momodora games. So what I perceive as flaws may be considered perfection by others. Now, without further ado, let's dive into the game. So for me, one aspect that has always attracted me to video games, whether they are Metroidvania, Roguelite, or even AAA titles, is a good boss fight. One criteria for a good boss fight, in my opinion, is its level of challenge. I'm not suggesting that every boss in the game should be challenging, but I want to feel a sense of achievement when I defeat some of them. That's why I was a bit disappointed with the bosses in Momodora. Now, don't get me wrong, the game is beautiful and the bosses are creative, but they are just too easy. They always make a noise and a flash before they attack, so you can easily dodge or block. And they don't even mix up their attacks, they just repeat the same pattern over and over. It is like they are begging to be hit. Now, I don't want to be too harsh because I still enjoyed the game and the bosses looked cool, but I hardly ever died to a boss, and if I did, I would beat them on the second try without breaking a sweat. You might say, well, why don't you play on a harder difficulty? But the game only has normal mode for the first playthrough. Maybe there are harder difficulties in later playthroughs, but I wish it was more challenging from the start. While the bosses in Momodora are easy and predictable, the game tries to compensate for this by making the regular mobs more annoying and persistent. However, this seems to be a misguided approach by the developers. I mean, for instance, the enemies in this game respawn every time the player leaves an area. This creates an unnecessary inconvenience that the developers could have easily avoided. <laughs> I failed to see the rationale behind this design choice and I believe that it would have been preferable to only respawn enemies when the player rings the bells. For context, the bells are basically checkpoints in this game. Now this would have been more consistent with the storyline too. The developers could have also introduced the mechanic where the number or strength of the enemies would depend on the number of times the player rings the bells. This would add some challenge and strategy to the game. Perhaps this feature was inherited from the previous Momodoro games and it is part of the game's identity. Nevertheless, I often found that this disrupted the flow of the game, especially compared to other platformers where enemies do not respawn unless the player dies or restarts the level. This often resulted in my frustration as I had to explore and revisit multiple areas. And, I mean, clearing enemies at one point became a tedious task. While grappling with the respawn issue and its impact on the game's flow, there was another aspect that added to the perceived difficulty in an unconventional manner. Another example of how this game became more difficult in the wrong way is the fact that you can't teleport to every bell station 
aka checkpoint, even after unlocking the ability to teleport. Uh, this may be a little difficult to hear. Okay, Dave? Give it to me straight. Dave, I'm afraid uh, you can't teleport. I might be missing a part of the story as to why I was unable to teleport to every bell. Otherwise, it was another unnecessary annoyance that made the game longer for no good reason. And maybe again, this is another mechanic passed down from previous Momodora games, and I wouldn't know about that. But anyways, uh, these were the only negative things I have to say in my 8 hour time it took me to beat the game. So now let's move on to what I found to be good things. Okay, so this game is beautiful. Of course, this is probably a niche opinion, since when my partner saw me playing this game, her reaction was as if I had lost my mind. Ultimately, I said what I said, and I meant what I said, and I'm a go. Nevertheless, this pixelated game with its non-linear level design had me hooked. And to be honest, the game is not completely non-linear, but there were many times when I almost got overwhelmed by the number of routes I could take to move forward, which is a good thing for me. I like to being overwhelmed with many choices. And of course, I was hoping not to forget to come back and explore the other routes. Now, the colors are very nice to the eyes. And thanks to this game, I gained an appreciation for pixelated graphic art. Obviously, this is not my first platformer I've played that offers pixelated graphics, but it is the first one that does a great job with the surrounding for the purpose of being cute. And of course, that's the only word I could think of, thanks to my vocabulary, to describe it. I like you. I like sex. It's nice. I am sure there are more games that offer the same thing. And thanks to Momodora, I am now more open to them. The complexity of the level design, with its many routes for traveling, would have definitely been more appreciated if it wasn't for the respawning enemies. And I promise you guys this is the last time I'm gonna talk about that. The game does a great job of introducing different skills at different times, so you get to go back and explore previous areas that you could not have done previously. After all, it is a standard mechanics that most Metrovania games have adapted over the years, which is again something that I have always enjoyed. While the level design and pixel graphics of Momodora Moonlit Ferro are impressive and immersive, the combat system is equally engaging and customizable. Uh, the movements feel great and attack animations are perfect. I don't know why, but this game reminded me a lot of Maple Story. Perhaps it was the way our protagonist Momo would attack the demons and how it felt when they would get staggered. Aside from the nostalgic feeling, I was impressed by the number of sigils this game offered. Sigils are the equivalent of skills and attributes, and they are a lot of them. They help you personalize how you want to get through the game, often making it harder or easier. For example, I like to play aggressively, so a sigil that would offer me a shield after healing would suit me better, whereas someone else might prefer a boost in shooting arrows, and so on. There were times that I had a hard time choosing between which sigil I want to equip, which is a great thing. Again, as I said before, I love to be overwhelmed. Overall, the big pool of sigils to use was my favorite thing from the combat system and made me eager to risk my playthrough to find them all. As we shift from the intricacies of the combat system to the narrative elements, it is essential to explore how Momodora Moonlit Farewell excels not only in gameplay dynamics, but also in delivering a compelling and emotionally resonant storyline. The way that Momodora presented its story was quite enjoyable. It was simple and easy to follow. The story was conveyed through various means, such as conversations, writings, and more. Another nice touch was how emotions were portrayed through texts, something that I do not see often enough in the platformer genre. Throughout my journey as Momo, I was able to understand when she was angry, sad, frustrated, happy, and embarrassed, which made it easier to appreciate what she's going through. 
Furthermore, side conversations between Momo and her friends were a nice touch, especially since a good number of them were about things other than the main story, cause this allowed me to connect with Momo and her world and I appreciate that. So now you are probably wondering if I think this game is worth $16.99. Of course, if you understood anything through my thick accent by now. I would be amazed. But anyways, Momodora is a beautiful game with an easy story to follow. For a platformer, it does an amazing job connecting you with the world and our protagonist Momo. Its level designs are complex and do not feel linear, but is it worth $16.99? Well, my short answer is no, but don't get me wrong, Momodora Moonlit Farewell is a fun game and during the 8 hours it took me to beat this game, I was thoroughly entertained. Nevertheless, the main game is too short in my opinion, to be worth $16.99. After beating the game, you do have the option to revisit all the boss fights in Nightmare Mode, which the game times you. I believe this was a great addition for a lot of players, but that was not something I was interested in. With all that said, if you have the money and plenty to spare, sure go ahead and pay the full price. Otherwise, I believe you should wait until it goes on sale to buy the game. Alright boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed my brief review of this game and I wish you all a good day. Bye.